Hello everyone, that's this is Megan, I'm Penelope. You might know me by being in the front desk of the clinic, but I'm also behind the scenes of social media most of the time. Now I'm gonna be right here presenting to you, doing an interview with Dr. Megan about postpartum, basically questions, postpartum questions about pelvic health. Uh, so first I wanna start by introducing Megan. Um, and then please, Megan, let us know, like. Tell us what made you pretty much choose physical therapy, pelvic physical therapy specifically, and yeah. Sure, awesome, yeah. So I've wanted to be a physical therapist since I was in fifth grade, so I'm definitely one of those weird people that decided what they wanted to be and stayed with it. I never changed my major, um, I always knew where I was going. And then I got to PT school and my roommate in PT school couldn't go to this conference that I was going to. And she said, Megan, when you go, make sure you go to this session and learn about pelvic floor for me So th and then come back and report. So I said, okay, Heather, I'll do that for you. So I went <laughs> to this conference and I went to this session and it was called, what are we, where did we come from and what do we do? And so it was all about the start of pelvic floor physical therapy and I fell in love from that moment on. And so this is my first year of PT school and then I start to just take more courses, I start to follow people on social media and just get more in the know of what the heck this pelvic floor PT thing is. Um, and then unfortunately I um, have a lot of friends and colleagues that were involved in the Larry Nassar abuse in Michigan. I grew up in Michigan and was a gymnast um, in club gymnastics there and then I also competed at Central Michigan University as a college athlete and so unfortunately uh, many of the people that I have competed with and have interacted with were negatively impacted and abused by um, Nassar and so many of the things that he says were medical treatment um, are similar to the things I do I just do it with a glove on and consent and proper education on what that involves and I'm sure we'll go a little bit more into like what exactly that is, but I want to bring the like taboo down of pelvic floor PT and definitely clarify what exactly it is so that no one is scared to come. Yeah, perfect. Great story. I feel like, yeah, like for me, it was definitely different with the professions changed a lot. So it's very impressive that you knew since fifth grade what you <laughs> wanted to do. Yeah. So, and I know we're focusing specifically on postpartum. So tell me, um, Basically, how many like years or how much time have you been working with like women that ha had a baby postpartum? Yeah, so immediately right after school, or I guess during school, I was lucky enough to have a clinical rotation that was all pelvic focused. So I mean, I got to see all things pelvic in terms of people who were pregnant or postpartum and um, other things as well. And then when I got my first job, I was able to treat a little bit in the pelvic and postpartum realm, and I've been there ever since. So I graduated in 2019, so kind of since 2018, I've been seeing patients who are um, postpartum and many other things uh, since then. Nice, okay, perfect. And now, in terms of coming to physical therapy, how would you say, do you, like, do you think people need a referral? I know you pretty much mentioned uh, basically, like, do you think they need to see their gynecologist first, for example, or their OB, like anything like that? Sure, yeah, that's definitely how it used to be back in the day in terms of physical therapy. Uh, patients needed a referral to come to see us. But ever since 2018 in the state of Illinois, you do not need any sort of referral to come see me. And that includes postpartum. I think a big misconception, you know, first people learn, oh, I don't need a referral to come see you. Great, I'll come see you for like my shoulder, my knee. Uh, but for some reason, as soon as that postpartum window hits, people are like, well, surely I still need permission to come see you. And that's just not true. You can just give us a call and set up an appointment and come see us without that referral. And that's because I'm a doctor of physical therapy and trained to make those decisions of diagnosing you with what's going on and then providing that guidance and feedback if we do need to bring a gynecologist on board or an obstetrician or another healthcare provider. Provider. Got it. Okay, perfect. And now with that being said, uh, how soon would you recommend basically someone coming into physical therapy, especially like if maybe they haven't seen their gynecologist, for example? Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, let's say ideally I would be seeing you while you were pregnant, you know, like hopefully you would come into the clinic, I'd be able to work with you, maybe even before you were pregnant. And we would prepare that pelvic floor, teach you all about what's normal and what's not. And then postpartum, we would already have that plan in place. And so if I'm seeing someone when they're pregnant, I would actually set up a visit two weeks postpartum on telehealth. So this is definitely uh, different than the norm out there. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people like wait until that six week postpartum checkup with their OB to get cleared and then they come and see me or they think they have to wait a certain amount of time. And like I said earlier, that's not true. So I would love to see you uh, two weeks postpartum. Like I said, on telehealth works really well because um, you don't know what your schedule is going to be at that time of life, two weeks postpartum. You could be in bed, you could be uh, feeding, you could be on the toilet, you could be toileting your newborn child. And so it really is helpful to go over like what happened during the delivery, you know, what interventions, if any, were used, and then come up with a more specific plan about what to do in those first two weeks postpartum. Because um, Penelope, do you know what most women are told when they leave the hospital of what to do? Mm, I would say like, no, I don't know. <laughs> Basically that. They, they, first off, a lot has just gone on and so they can't remember like what anybody told them to do. But unfortunately, a lot of times people are told just go easy and only pick up things as heavy as your baby and otherwise that's kind of it and so mm -hmm. for someone who wants more information of like well can i walk well can i pick up my baby in its car seat can i you know pick up my toddler that's at home all those are great questions for us to go over in that two-week postpartum telehealth visit and again if you've been uh, working with me prior and we check in and things are going fine maybe we don't see each other again for another two or three weeks as so many things are changing and healing in that time and then we might see each other in the clinic maybe around that special six to seven week mark um, and then we kind of continue our uh, care from there nice they're great great answers great answers now in terms of symptoms for example uh, for someone that's uh, just had a baby, let me ask you, like, what would be one of the main symptoms? Would you say potentially, like, leakage could be one of the main symptoms that we that they women could be dealing with, for example? Yeah, for sure. And it could be leakage out of many holes that's <laughs> happening. Um, uh, definitely, you know, breastfeeding uh, leakage or, you know, that's normal, so that's good. Um, but, yes, if you're leaking urine or if you're having bowel movements uh, in your pants when you're not meaning to, um, those are all things that are not normal, particularly in the long term um, but if it is happening postpartum we are going to talk about it there is a lot that goes on down there with giving birth to a baby particularly vaginally but cesarean as well so if you are leaking postpartum that's generally a good uh, reason to start the conversation like I said, a lot has gone on down there. So let's say you've never leaked before and you're just kind of leaking a couple of times in those first couple weeks postpartum. I would say that's amongst like the normal thing that's probably going to happen. And then I'm gonna teach you how to breathe, how to use your pelvic floor muscles, and then everything will kind of find its norm again. That's fine. But we will talk about it more if that leakage continues week six, week 12, and so on and so forth. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. So now, for example, like if you have somebody that comes in uh, five years after they had like a baby, for example, or 10 years after they had a baby, you can still help them. There's no like a specific timeline that you have to follow for physical therapy, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Say, I think, is it like uh, the best time to plant a tree was... 50 mm -hmm. years ago, but the second best time is today. Uh, right, something like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think so. Yeah, so, yeah, the best time to come see me would be before you even get pregnant, um, but otherwise come see me as soon as you can. So whether, you know, sometimes life is just like too much in those immediate years postpartum. A lot of times uh, people have their babies closer together, and so there's just a lot going on at home, and sometimes people find, uh, my, find their way into the clinic like you said five ten you know years after when they're ready to like focus on themselves and we make awesome improvements then too we still strengthen your pelvic floor i still teach you about how your muscles work and we go from there and accomplish your goals just the same of course i'd wish they would come yeah, see me right. earlier but yes yeah. absolutely no matter how old you are your muscles can still get stronger 
-hmm. And I know you mentioned like, for example, myths in terms of like having a referral from the gynecologist. What do you think are other myths that women believe and then they kind of just like follow through that instead of thinking, oh, maybe it's not like that. Yeah, okay, let's see. So what are the ones we've talked about already? You, so the referral. You don't need a referral, okay, yep. Right. You also don't have to wait six weeks. Okay. After okay. giving birth to see me, I can see, you can let me know the day after you give birth and have like ask questions, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. That's totally fine. Um, let's see the, um, having to like carry only the weight of your baby. Only the weight. Yes. Thank you. That's yeah. a great one. <laughs> um, so we will, depending on what happened during your delivery, we might limit the amount of weight that you are mm -hmm. lifting, but that's not an automatic thing. That's okay. where that conversation comes in of like, okay, did everything go as planned? Did you, you know, deliver your placenta? Did you have a normal amount of blood loss? Okay, great. We don't need to put as many limiting things on how much you're lifting or um, maybe move a little bit faster, getting you back to walking, yoga, weightlifting, those types of things. And then like, let's say, unfortunately, you know, something um, more serious did happen in terms of some blood loss or uh, an injury, then we might talk about having a family member or a partner step in more and work together on how they can um, be more involved. So I guess the myth there is like, not everybody's the same. Like right. I really hate these just blanket statements exactly. of like, you can't do anything until you're six weeks or okay. you have to, you know, do this before you can do this. I think when I'm working with people, they really see how like personalized the plan is. And I feel like that's the biggest myth. Yeah. like you're gonna have a personalized plan that mm -hmm. fits you as an individual and it involves what you were doing while you were pregnant and maybe previously to that too. So mm -hmm. maybe some myths around exercise, let's talk more about that. Mm -hmm. So um, the famous like injury in pregnancy, and I'm gonna say injury in quotes, is the diastasis rectus abdominis right. or the DRA. Everybody gets really concerned, particularly on social media, that those muscles are becoming further apart mm -hmm. or separating. Um, well, let me just clear something up. It is going to happen to 100% of people in their third trimester. The muscles need to be further apart in order for the baby to grow. That's okay. just going to happen. It's a requirement oh, of okay. physics and physiology. <laughs> and it just happens. Yeah, it just <laughs> needs to happen. And then postpartum, there's a lot of things we can do to keep those core muscles strong. And it's about the strength. That's the myth okay. here. It's not about how like far that distance is apart mm -hmm. from those muscles. It's how strong those muscles are and how do they work? Are you breathing while you're sitting up? Are you pushing your belly out or are you contracting those muscles uh, properly? All those things are way more important than the measured distance between the muscles. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say like coming back to like the distance, for example, we've had like a couple comments sometimes in some posts that say like, oh, my diastasis is like six centimeters, or, like whatever distance they say, mm -hmm. and they're like, how long is it gonna take to close, for example? Uh, is there a specific like time? Again, I know everybody's different, but like, yeah. do you think people shouldn't be again as concerned with that distance? Yeah. First, I would say we shouldn't be as concerned with the distance. Okay. Um, second, it is not an injury, as in something tore. So you know, mm -hmm. nothing's like ripped or torn, kind of in that area, and so it's not like a paper cut that's healing or like if you have a tear at the vaginal opening with your delivery, it's not healing from that sense. Okay. Um, so it's not that it even needs to heal, you know? Mm -hmm. And so people are concerned with that, those muscles coming together. And I would say, give yourself a whole year of trying to get those muscles working the way that they should and to kind of think about maybe what your postpartum uh, look and strength could be. Okay. I know a year sounds like a long time and it's not like it's gonna go from, yeah, six centimeters down to one centimeter. Like there's nothing that is out there that can predict or say okay. like, oh yeah, for sure, if you're starting at six centimeters apart, one year, you know, six months from now, you'll be three apart, and then mm -hmm. a year, you'll be zero apart. Like, there's no predictive factor like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, for someone who's hesitant about starting PT, for example, uh, how would you, like, what would you recommend? What kind of advice would you say, or what would you say in general for those people, for those women that are hesitant about even starting PT, or even maybe, I don't know, going to the gynecologist? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So specific, yeah. Specifically, pelvic PT. 
Uh, yeah, what would you say? Yeah, so I would say kind of ask yourself why you're hesitant and try to find those answers. So is it that you're not really sure what happens in the appointments? Okay, great, we have a video for that. <laughs> you, know, you can look that up. Is it a time thing? Do you think it's going to take, you know, like with maybe another physical therapist, you've had to come in like three times a week and you think that's gonna be exactly the same? Generally, I see my patients once a week or every other week. And so that's a great question to ask. Um, I guess I would say ask more questions in terms of, you know, figure out what those hesitations are and then find the answers to those barriers by giving our clinic a call or even Googling, you know, if you're not in Illinois or in the area, Googling pelvic floor PT near me for sure. All right, perfect. Now I'm thinking, am I like forgetting? Do you think there's something like another key to mention, another key? Tip. I don't know if besides that, I don't know, we kind of like spoke like an overall theme of everything mm -hmm. in general, which was the main goal of the video, but why do you say any other words that you have? Um, in terms of postpartum physical therapy? Yeah, in terms of, yeah, anything. Yeah. So you can get stronger um, faster than you may uh, have thought. And so I can definitely help you get back to uh, like being underneath a barbell, being on a rig, doing pull-ups, rope climbs. Um, I love getting people stronger, whether they've done that before or they've never done that before. Love working with individuals and empowering them to get stronger as their babies continue to grow because you uh, only need to be stronger to lift them up as they grow as well. So I want to make sure that your body's prepared for whatever uh, your children throw at you, <laughs> literally, <laughs> figuratively. <laughs> so yes. Uh, yeah. All right. Perfect. So I think, I mean, I think this is a very good uh, video. I mean, it's our first live, basically, at least <laughs> I think, uh, especially with, uh, I think it's a good topic to start with. Um, if you like the lives, let us know in the, in the comments, share this video. You know, I think um, it's a good way to start if you want to have other topics mentioned, maybe with another PT, if you have any specific questions, let us know. Again, just send us a message. Uh, otherwise, I think we're all good. Awesome. Anything else? All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Megan, for the talk. Yeah. And we're all good.